we made a video not long ago talking about why it is that people can get lost in a video game. It doesn't have to be a PC game or a Xbox game or PlayStation game or a Nintendo game. It can be a game on your phone. It can be Candy Crush Saga, if you've ever played that on your phone, or any number of free-to-play games on your phone. And you pick it up, and you think it's just, you're going to kill a few minutes, and then you look up, and an hour has gone by. And you're like, where did the time go? And you realize it's because you've been completely engrossed in this game for an hour that you have no idea where the time went. Your consciousness was lost in the game. And no one can reasonably argue that a puzzle game on your phone like Tetris or Candy Crush Saga or who knows what, these little puzzle games that they give away for free, so-called free, they're not a virtual reality. That's a full 3D experience. It's not like an MMORPG or any number of video games that you might play on a home console nowadays. It's a stupid little puzzle game with quirky little sounds and yeah, sure, bright colors and this and that and the other thing, but it's not a virtual reality. And yet it's very easy to get lost in that. And let's not even talk video games. Have you ever been driving in a car on a freeway? And you look up and you realize you missed your exit or you've been driving along in the freeway and you look up and you realize an hour and a half has gone by and you have no idea where it went and you have no memory of the last 50 miles or 100 miles that you've driven on the freeway. Where did the time go? Or more importantly, where did you go during that time? And the reality is you were probably thinking about the future or thinking about the past. You were daydreaming. You were grooving to the music. You're doing any number of things. And basically, you're, you are basically driving that car on autopilot. You weren't really driving that car. That car was being driven for you, and you were somewhere else. Because you can't remember the past 45 minutes or an hour of you driving the car. And you may have even missed your exit, which means you know you weren't paying attention to what you were doing. So where were you? And if it's so easy to get lost in your own thoughts, and it's so easy to lose yourself in a video game, or even a mobile game, well, look around you. Look at the three-dimensional simulation that you are in. Look at the three-dimensional avatar, this physical body, this physical vessel that you are in, complete with its own personality, filled with its own thoughts and its own emotions and all these centers, the mental center, the emotional center, and the motor instinctive sexual center that is all susceptible to stimulation. If it's so easy for me to lose myself in a video game or in my own thoughts driving on the freeway, maybe the only reason why that's possible is because my consciousness is already lost in a virtual reality, in a very convincing virtual reality, one that is able to stimulate all three brains of the human machine, and one which has been reinforced upon me since the day that I was born for as many years that I've been alive in this lifetime, it has been reinforced upon me as being reality, as being real. And this identity that I have has been reinforced. In other words, my consciousness has been conditioned over and over and over, you know, 24 hours a day for how many years? It's like, imagine you've been playing uh, World of Warcraft since the day you were born and your only reprieve from it was at nighttime when you went to sleep and even then many nights you would you would go off into your own little world dreaming then you would dream up your own little world we call it the dreamscape it's the uh, lunar fifth dimension and our consciousness goes off dreaming all the while our spirit our essence our being our true self is forgotten. We are despirited. We are separated. We are divided. Our consciousness divided. And we have so many different elements, so many different mechanical elements in our consciousness. Our fear, our anger, our pride, our lust, our greed, our laziness, our gluttony, and so many different aspects and versions of that pulling us this way and that way and every which way. And we live these lives but we have filled our world with distractions and stimulations, 
stimulants. And some of these stimulants are chemical. Some of these stimulants are auditory. Some are visual. And some are multimedia. We fill our world. We surround ourselves with stimulants. And our life is designed, it seems, to keep us in that sympathetic nervous system, constantly stressing out about this thing or that thing or the other thing, keeping us in a constant state of anxiety, in a constant state of heightened agitation, of heightened stimulation. Because if we are in a heightened state of stimulus, it is more likely that we will remain trapped in the simulation because never forget the relationship that we've established here between the word stimulation and simulation to be trapped in craving and aversion in other words to be trapped in ego to be trapped in desire and we've mentioned this before as well that all of this you know despirited we have the word desire and desire is d Sire. What's a sire? Sire is what sits on the throne. Sire is the leader. Sire is the king, the alpha, the head of the pyramid, the, the head of the hierarchy. Our desires desire, dethrone our being, our essence, our true self. Our true self is desired. Why? Because of our attachment to stimulation and our obsession are being hypnotized by the simulation. This is the relationship between desire and being despirited, and we are thus divided. And if we are divided, divided from our true self, divided from our being, we are conquered. Because all these egos are now playing their game of throne, and they're all jockeying for that throne. And one desire trumps another, and then another, and then another desire comes, and another desire. And remember, desires can be both craving and aversion. Desire for pleasure, avoidance of pain. And these desires just are constantly playing this game of thrones, constantly dethroning one another, desiring, constantly desiring, 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 desiring. And they're knocking one another off the throne. And our consciousness, remember, that throne is the consciousness. It's the, it's the locus of being. It is the thing that we pay most attention to. It is the thing that drives our will in any given moment. That's the throne of our being. That's where our being should be sitting, our spirit. That's the throne when we get intuition, when we get inspiration, when we get imagination. That's when our being, our spirit manages to get onto the throne for a moment or two before it is desired again. But it's that throne, the iron throne of our being, of our very existence, that all of this is about. You can, and we even use this word, we even use this word, the seat of the soul. What is it that assumes that, that occupies the seat of our soul? It's like the cockpit of a fighter jet. Who's piloting the fighter jet? Any given moment time, who's sitting in the cockpit? Who's sitting in the driver's seat? And that's why we have that expression in the seat of the soul. Is it our being or is it any one of these desires? And their point, their very point of existence is precisely to desire us, to despirit us, and to divide and conquer our consciousness because they all want a piece of our consciousness. And that's why, in a very real way, we are all schizophrenic on a very fundamental level, because our consciousness is not whole and unified. It is fragmented and, and broken up in between all these different desires, all these different cravings and aversions, all these different programs of stimulation, which keep us trapped in not just a simulation, but a, a subjective version of that simulation. We all can't even agree on the nature of the simulation because as we were saying, all this is subjective. Another way to think about that or understand that is deterministic. Mechanical nature is subjective. We have laws on this level of reality of, that define the simulation, laws that cannot be broken. 
at least they cannot be broken so long as one is subjected to those laws. So how do you circumvent the laws? You must use faculties that are beyond the simulation. Faculties that are outside of the simulation. Faculties that are not dependent on the simulation. And if you use faculties that are not dependent on the simulation, then you are using faculties that are not subjected to the laws that govern the simulation. Now, this was explored explicitly in the Matrix films, where Neo exhibited characteristics of one who was able to change the rules or bend the rules or act outside of the rules of the Matrix. We could say that perhaps the Matrix films didn't explore this or address this in the best of ways, perhaps, but the way that we can uh, comprehend and apply what the Matrix was allegorizing was understanding the difference between conditioned consciousness, right, versus free consciousness. Conditioned versus unconditioned consciousness. When we understand what subjective and objective mean. Subjective is determined, deterministic, and objective is free will. Free consciousness versus conditioned consciousness. This, by the way, is where the term human condition comes from. This is why we often say human conditioned. And what does conditioning mean? It means taking something and subjecting it to something else over and over and over and over and over again until it becomes its second nature. You're conditioning your human machine. The same thing happens psychologically to children in school or to society that is being conditioned to believe a certain manifesto or certain philosophy or certain political stance or religious stance. And the Black Lodge has used this to very great effect throughout history to the point where people like Goebbels and other others have just outright said openly that if you repeat a lie often enough, it becomes the truth for people. And you look around you in the world today, you see it all the time. This is a fact. And if you speak to anybody in advertising or marketing or anybody trying to convince anyone of anything, they are all operating on the left side of this equation. And they're all looking to condition the hearts and minds of people. Very few people are appealing nowadays to people's higher self, to people's true nature. Most people are appealing to fear, selfishness, traits, attributes related to the I or related to their tribe, related to their political affiliations, their, their cultural or racial identifications. In other words, it's a very subjective conditioned arguments that are being made and they're trying to leverage the conditioning of said consciousness but this is ultimately the nature of egos themselves this is the nature of desire to desire to eliminate the spirit to despirit this is the point of egos this is their their job especially during the kali yuga and they do it exceptionally well we cannot afford to be naive. There are many, many, many people, especially those in the new age, who believe propaganda that has been devised explicitly to ensnare them, to despirit them, even as they believe themselves to be awakening or awakened already and one with the great spirit and one with source and that the world is on the verge of some mass global awakening and they refuse to face the facts.